Hello and welcome to Business Matters, the show about people behind businesses that help make Tacoma a great place to live and work. I'm your host, Mike Work, and today my guest is David Batker, who is the Chief Economist and Executive Director of Earth Economics. Welcome, David. Thank you, Mike. I'm so happy to be here. Great. Well, you have a fascinating business, a nonprofit, a little bit different than the kinds of things uh, we usually have here. Tell us about Earth Economics. Earth Economics is a small nonprofit. We're okay. based right here in Tacoma Downtown. on Tacoma Avenue. Mm -hmm. That's right. And we do work internationally, some in China, Ecuador, and a variety of places, nationally in the, the Mississippi Delta, for example. And mm -hmm. we've been working on some things in D.C. And then right locally here in Pierce County and King County and Western Washington. So you're all over the place. Even in China, I understand. That's right. Yeah, so, but right here at home, what is what is it that you do? What's your what's your service, or uh, what kind of consulting do you do? Well, our real focus is taking the best technology and knowledge of understanding the benefits that a watershed produces, the okay. natural systems for drinking water, mm -hmm. flood protection, storm protection, recreation, mm -hmm. variety of other things. All those things that people invest in. That's right. And, uh, but aren't always well connected, right? That's right. Exactly. Okay. And what we're, we've done is kind of put a system together where, where you could look at them together. Whether it's in China or the Puyallup Valley, mm -hmm. we've kind of had a tradition of saying we're going to build stormwater systems right. to get stormwater in, into the river fast. Right. And then we've got a flood district that says we need higher levees. Yeah. And we also need to take care of our drinking water. We need salmon restoration. So these things are so closely connected. But and they're all operating separately. Right. So governments come to you. They realize these guys can help us figure out how to do this better. Is that it? Exactly. So what really? we've said is you can get this suite of benefits mm -hmm. more efficiently for less cost if we plan it together. For example, by looking at moving a levee out, mm -hmm. you can get salmon restoration, better water quality, and better flood protection so, all so at once. So they, they, people pay you to come in and sit down, they get groups of people together, and yeah. these are the kinds of things that you show them. That's right. And help them understand so they can make better policies. Exactly. So we do several things that are brand new. Mm -hmm. One is to identify all these ecosystem services to put a value to them. So if you, in the past, like the Army Corps and others have said, a levy is worth money to right. provide flood protection. Mm -hmm. Because you don't have floods that cost a lot of money to deal with? That's right. Okay. But the wetlands the forests, the rivers and lakes that also provide flood protection, that wasn't in fully included. Nobody's been counting those. Nobody's been uh, uh, putting a price tag on what they're worth. Right. Oh, that's interesting. And so, for example, we have done five years of worth of work in Louisiana around the Mississippi Delta. Okay. And we showed with a group of academics that for every 2.5 miles of wetlands, you take one foot off the storm surge of a hurricane. No kidding. That's right. And, it, and Hurricane Katrina, the storm surge was reduced by more than 10 feet just by the wetlands. Wow. And that protects the levees because it takes the wave action out. Okay. So the Army Corps sat back and said, well, we agree with that. Uh, now we need to change the economics. We need to change our investments. And now they're looking at restoring that delta with these big diversions because that's actually going to provide better hurricane and protection. By big diversions, you mean returning, restoring the wetlands? That's right. So a diversion is where you put a notch in mm -hmm. like the Mississippi River uh, and then you allow sediment and water to, to build spread up. out yeah. and you're rebuilding that delta uh -huh. because we've lost 1.2 million acres of wetlands. And for instance, right down the track of Hurricane Tr Katrina, we lost 30 linear miles of wetlands. So it takes an economist like you to say that all the pain and suffering that happened there, all the damage that we continue to help pay to restore or fix, could have been prevented if we just would have had wetlands, yes. more wetlands. So we lost, it would cost about $15 billion to restore much of this system. Wow. It was $200 billion in damage from one hurricane and 1,400 people died. And so our point is that you can't even have an economy to remain there if we keep losing this natural system that's protecting and generating the benefits. Well, it's just amazing. I mean, <laughs> you have this expertise in looking at these things as only economists can. Mm -hmm. But how do you sell that? I mean, you're a business, and, and that's such sort of a, you know, it's, it's out there a little bit. How do you sell that? Well, I think things are really changing. It's exciting, Mike. I mean, we, for instance, King County, we did a report on the Cedar River, which showed that in the long run, the next 50, 100 years, 
if the strategy is slowly to buy out some lands and widen the floodway, mm -hmm. it's going to be far more inexpensive and cheaper. And development-wise, you're going to actually be able to maintain pack car and some really important industries in that area. Whereas if we keep trying to maintain this narrow floodway, um, we're going to have more catastrophic flooding. So, and so if you allow uh, people to come in and build on property rather than protect the wetland, it'll cost you more in the long run. That's right. And so, so yeah. like Fife is a good example mm -hmm. here. I mean, Tacoma, we have to think about our long-term development future. Mm -hmm. And part of that is maintaining natural systems that provide a lot of value for free and in perpetuity if we keep them healthy. But, but people don't put a price tag on that. When somebody comes in and exactly. says, I'm going to give you money, I'm going to pay taxes, I'm going to invest in this, and we're going to make all this money from essentially removing this wetland, there's, there's nothing to put a cost on that wetland. So the policymakers are at a loss. So is that when they bring you in? That's right. And so there are new designs which are very exciting. We're proposing what we call a watershed investment utility. And we're proposing legislation, and probably next year, I mean, uh, in the state are, or? for the state of Washington, okay. that could apply to the Puyallup Basin, where you can coordinate your investments in flood protection, stormwater, drinking water, and you can even look at things like reimbursing landowners for the value their land provides for flood protection. Like in China, in this, so China, the Chinese Academy of Science looked at our work and said, come over here, you yeah. know, we're interested in what you're doing. But I found their work to be pretty interesting. They're reimbursing 40,000 farmers above Beijing. They took out these levees, allow the farmlands to flood during the winter when they don't have crops anyway. Wow. And then they, could, they calculated the dollars saved for flooding in Beijing, and they actually doubled farmers' incomes wow. with that payment. By, just by asking them to flood their farmlands. And the, and the farmers love it because it doubled their income. Some of them had to move their houses up onto the hill. Okay. The government paid for that. Nice. And, and so we need to think here, like in the Chehalis Basin, where we've had mm -hmm. catastrophic flooding, yeah. those farmlands, they provide crops. They also provide flood protection. Interesting. And, and we need to think. And so this is a different kind of model, too, because it doesn't say the government has to buy everything or take everything over. It says, let's, get the, let's identify who's provisioning these goods and who the beneficiaries are, and let's have a mechanism. And you're helping to draw these dots. Are you really an so activist? So we're trying to design some of these things. You're really uh, a trend-setting sort of activist, building a whole new industry, in a way. Yes, and I think you know, it's interesting, because four or five years ago, a lot of environmental consulting companies mm -hmm. did not pay any attention to this. Really? And then as we moved forward, now we're seeing, we're, we're getting the message out and we see maybe 40, 50 consulting companies that are saying, wow, this has real potential. So mm -hmm. we're also building a private market for this work. Private market. Now you're, now you're talking about uh, selling something. What's, what is the private market? Tell me about this. Well, in this case, for instance, um, one company in the Northwest Parametrics, we're looking yeah. at how you build models to actually look at this. For example, right now, our modeling for flood protection, which we use right here in the Puyallup River Valley, is insufficient. Mm -hmm. And it's because all we look at are built capital for how much flood protection we get. So okay. levees, for example. Now, I think we need levees. We know we need levees. Sure. But the thing is, if you could look at the flood protection value you get from natural systems, right. dams, and levees, then you can decide where best to spend the money that is out there. So is there a way that you get investors to invest in that? Is that what the market is? Well, there are different, yeah, the, good question, Mike. So each ecosystem service, there are, there are some markets like wet, wetland banking okay. or water quality trading right. and such where we can create new markets and we can have private participants in those markets mm -hmm. and we're creating value. And right there's there. a variety of ways that trading them can actually exactly. make money for people. Yeah, and that, that is taking place in the U.S. in a number of places, mm -hmm. the Willamette Valley, for example. Okay. Um, on the other hand, there are other ecosystem services because of their physical nature they don't fit to in a market. Like flood protection, I can't say, oh, you didn't pay for your flood protection, so your piece of property gets a lot of water and nobody else around does because right. they paid. It doesn't quite work so, that way. Yeah, this is, this is what we call a true public good. Okay. So in that case, we can't necessarily use markets to solve the problem. And, and that's why we have flood protection the way it is, or storm water through public agents. So you're involved in all these things. Yeah. So just real quickly, how do you get into this? What made you decide to start this company? <laughs> Great question, Mike. 
I graduated from Pacific Lutheran University in earth science and biology. Mm -hmm. I worked at the Centralia coal mine. Mm -hmm. And then at, in that mine we had 10 seams of coal. We only mined three. And I calculated the life of the mine with the other geology department and said, we're going to run out of resources quickly. And the mine managers came back and said, well, we'd rather make 1% over 30 years or 40 years than 1% less over 120 years. <laughs> and I said, this is too short-sighted. And yeah. so I decided I wanted to study economics. Okay. And I went to study with this Herman Daly, who is the premier, I think, ecological economist. And where, where is he? He was at that time in Louisiana State uh -huh. University. Oh, okay. So I went down to Louisiana. And then I worked on many of these issues and uh, then decided to come back to the Northwest. But this is a huge an important expanding area. Was it? Was it sort? Did you feel like it was a risk to take the step out? Did you have to invest up front? I'd say it, it, my friends looked at me and said, "How could you leave this high-paying job to go yeah. back to school yeah. to study something that seems kind of esoteric?" Right. And I, that's the word I was looking for. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> but I felt as though once we started looking at this, I felt there's there's a huge amount of opportunity because. If you think about it, Mike, in the 1930s, we were short. If we needed more salmon, we needed more boats and nets. Right. And so scarcity was on built stuff. But now scarcity for the 21st century has shifted. Right. It's really natural capital that we're short of. Mm -hmm. And so its value is rising rapidly. We're not short of chainsaws. We're short of trees. We're not short of nets. We're short of fish and fish habitat. Right. And as a result, their value is rising. And that's why markets and value are shifting. And you and just saw this opportunity. And how, how many firms are there like yours? Well, not too many. <laughs> I have to Naturally. say that it's, um, I would just say there, yeah, yeah. The, and it's very strange because we have a very unique niche, I'd mm -hmm. say. So Portland State University has just started... Uh, an institute for sustainable solutions. We're going to have a partnership there, and they're sort of looking at these issues. You've got a few consulting companies, but they are, I don't think they quite have the very cutting edge right. side. Like, we're taking the whatever is the newest, best thing out of the National Academy of Science, and we want to apply it. This is fantastic. Yeah. It's, it's so wonderful. I mean, I, I, we're running out of time, but, yeah. but i got to tell you, we could go on for an hour on this topic. It's so interesting. Well, I'd but love to come back. It's <laughs> wonderful. Like, okay. Uh, it's wonderful to have such a cutting edge organization right here in Tacoma, building and making a difference in the whole world. Yes. Well, it's definitely been my, I think, my growing up here in Tacoma that was the root of it, in truth. That's why you came back. Yeah, and that's well, why I came back. I love Lucky Tacoma. for us, you're going to be better for this community and the whole world in the long run. That's right. We want to have jobs here. Great. David, thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. That's it for this segment on Business Matters. Stay with us for Economic Gardening after this break.